Good evening all, and welcome. It's a well-known fact that humans have not yet discovered everything there is to know. There are so many stories we've heard before of things which science has yet to explain. But there is one final question which probes many of us. Are we alone in the universe? The people in tonight's video would claim that we are not. But make your own mind up, and let me know in the comments. But for now, it's time to get comfortable, and let the darkness take control. As a very young child in the 1980s, I used to be taken by the Easter Bunny to the North Pole to play with Santa every year on Christmas Eve. I was sworn to secrecy about this, or else the Easter Bunny said he wouldn't come back, and these visits happened every year without fail. At the North Pole, we would play together in a two-dimensional space, and the games we would play were educational in nature, but very fun. The experience was more like a projection or video game, but I would experience it as real. It's hard to describe. I have no recollection of the specifics outside of brief memory from my last visit. What I do know is that I loved these trips so much that before my last trip at the age of six or seven, I was actually more excited for the Easter Bunny to come and take me than I was for Christmas the next day. On this trip, I was told I was getting too old for these visits, and this would be the last one, and I was profoundly sad. For a few years after the Easter Bunny visits, all was quiet. Then, when I was nine, the first and only abduction I can clearly recall occurred. I don't recall the initiating events. By the time I came to, I was already being led into my front yard. It was lit up like day. I say being led, but I can't remember if I was alone or if I had some sort of escort. I want to say there were entities either side of me. My childhood front yard was basically a jungle, but there was one patch of grass that opened into the sky. On more than one occasion, I had sleepwalked here as a child and awoken on this patch of grass in the middle of the night. In the center of the patch of grass was a tiny silver craft, what I could describe as a typical flying saucer, only extremely small. The craft was so squat that I probably couldn't even fully stand up inside it as a nine-year-old child. I would estimate it was over five feet tall and 12 and a half feet across, and it hovered about four feet off the ground. I don't recall if there was ever any sort of landing gear on it, or if it was freely floating. In front of the craft, walking towards it and perpendicular to myself, was a classic grey alien. It did not acknowledge me. The creature was childlike in stature, probably a foot shorter than me at nine. I only having seen my first drawing of a grey alien a few months before this on a television program, I should have been terrified after viewing that. Despite that, being confronted by one in real life for the first time, I felt a sense of calmness and serenity. There was some sort of opening in the craft, but I can't recall if it was a hatch or gangway. I was escorted towards the opening, and I remember as I passed the outside of the hull, there being Egyptian-looking hieroglyphics inscribed along the lip of the craft, and then I blacked out. I'm seated on a bench in front of a glass screen. Across from me is a grey. Our attention is devoted to one another, and we are interfacing through the glass screen device. I am in what I take to be the interior of the craft, but the room is far physically larger than would be possible based on the exterior of the saucer. There are other beings in the room who are engaging in other tasks besides what me and my partner are doing. My attention is wholly devoted on the screen and the task at hand. The screen is a clear glass screen set on a table approximately four feet in height, and there is some manner of console on my side that I am using to interface with. I do not recall the grey having anything to use the interface with the device, the task I'm devoted to had something to do with communicating between English and the alien language. A thought suddenly comes to me. Why am I using this device to translate between English and the alien language when we can just talk using our minds? I find this thought very funny, as I'm having fun. Though the precise nature of what was going on eludes me, 
What I believe is I am typing in English, and having it translated to the alien on the other side. This doesn't make much sense though, because I understand these beings to be able to communicate telepathically. As I use the device, the grey is also using it at times, whether to teach, correct, or communicate, I cannot recall. And I black out again. The final stage of my abduction is a series of movies projected directly into my mind. I only recall two of them. In the first, I am in an inlet, in a sea of sorts, of the land before time. The earth is primordial and pristine, and I am moving through the water towards the mouth of the bay, and along the coasts on either side is luscious, unspoiled jungle, and it is profoundly beautiful. The second is a snippet of an apocalyptic environmental image. I see breakwater on a coastline with a lighthouse situated on it, waves are surging over the sides and consuming the coast. I am made to understand that humanity is responsible for what is happening here, and then it all ends. When I awoke the next day I didn't feel scared or terrified but a sense of calm and inner peace. My mind however felt totally overloaded with way too much that I had been given to remember. I was startled by the fact that I hadn't been afraid of the greys, because I had been having constant nightmares about them as soon as I first learned of them a few months prior. I was far more concerned, fixated even, upon remembering the message I had been given. The message, which seemed all-consumingly important, began to slip through my fingers as soon as I woke up. It was only through sheer will that I was able to retain the two snippets that I have recalled today. For many years I chalked up these memories to a sleep disorder, or being the fantasies of a child, and left them in my past. Then a few years ago I stumbled across an acclaimed abductee called Jim Sparks, and the parallels to my own experience were instantly uncanny. Instead of talking about medical experimentation or sperm extraction or other common abductee claims, he talked about how the aliens would place him in front of a glass screen to learn how to translate the alien alphabet. What's more, he talked about a mass abduction event that would have occurred when I was nine, in which the abductees were all gathered and shown images of Earth's oceans unspoiled prior to human damage, and then the deteriorous effect of human industry and pollution upon the world. He talks about the specific environmental imagery in abductees. He talks about the mass abduction event, and much more in many of his talks. I would not vouch for the veracity of anything he discusses because he does make some very outlandish claims. I am very hesitant of anyone claiming to know the nature or purpose of whatever this insane phenomenon is, but I cannot deny it though, at least for my own abduction experience. He was right on the money. What he described is precisely what I remember experiencing. As someone who has repressed these experiences, I just couldn't do it anymore after seeing his talk. It really did happen to me. The thought was liberating and terrifying. I now make my living as an environmental scientist. <laughs> I know, right? Those memories do not dictate my life. For many years, I used my scientific background and demands of proof to always dismiss my childhood experiences. But I was being dishonest with myself. I will now say whatever this phenomenon is, I am an experiencer of it. One time when I was out camping with my family in northern Idaho, Panhandle, a few years back, my dad and I were the last two people up sitting around the campfire. When he looked up at the sky and said, Whoa, what is that? I looked up, and saw this yellow light zigzagging across the sky. It was far too high up to be a drone, and it was making such quick back and forth motions across the sky that it seemed impossible for a human to be able to survive travelling like that. We both watched it until it went out of our eyesight. Seemed like maybe a minute or so that we were able to watch it travelling like that. We both couldn't figure out what it might be, perhaps an unmanned drone, but there aren't any large cities or anything nearby for hours. Maybe it was some type of secret government test or something, maybe that's why they were flying it out in the middle of nowhere late at night. But let me know if you have any other ideas. The other sighting I had was on the 4th of July a few years prior in southern Washington, near the Idaho border. 
Before the fireworks show started, my friends and I noticed this purple stationary light high up in the sky. Again, way too high to be a drone. And it looked kind of like a star, only purple. We thought this was strange and commented on it throughout the night. And other people around us did too, but it stayed stationary throughout the whole fireworks show. But once the fireworks ended, it took off very quickly in a straight line and just zipped out of sight. My friends who were with me all witnessed this as well, and none of us could figure out what it might have been. Both times I saw the UFO, and I was with someone else who saw it too, so I know it wasn't just me. If anyone has ever seen anything similar, please let me know. This happened on New Year's Eve in 2016, in Ixtapa, Mexico. My family and I go there every year to spend the holidays since we own a little apartment there, and it allows my dad to escape his work environment, just for a little bit. The apartment we own is in an apartment complex which has 24 apartments total divided into four towers. They all look like the same, and have the same small terrace with a small hot tub in the corner. Since we've owned the apartment for a few years, my parents became close friends with a lot of the other residents, which created a nice environment to be in during the holidays. On New Year's Eve, we were invited along with many of the other residents to spend New Year's at one of their apartments, and roughly 35 people showed up. The apartment is on the fourth floor, and we arrived there around 10pm, since many of us had dinner before with family and joined to celebrate the New Year for the rest of the night. Around 11pm, one of my mother's friends looked up into the sky and said she saw something strange. Many of the residents, me included, shrugged it off and kept talking. But within a few minutes, more and more people started looking up. Once we saw the commotion, we got up and went outside to the terrace to join them to see what the fuss was about. It was strange at first, but I can describe it. It was as if the stars were twinkling. We could see stars, but they were bunched up closer than usual and were twinkling intermittently in an unusual fashion. As we kept looking, more and more stars kept showing up and twinkling. Some said they were stars and we were staring at nothing. But then what we thought were stars in the sky began to move towards the other stars that were twinkling. At this point, we all started to freak out a little. I like to think that we are not alone and that there are paranormal forces out there, but this was truly the first time I had no idea what was going on. There were too many to count, but we all agreed between 100 to 150 stars were twinkling in this one section of the sky, and more seemed to move across in the sky to join them. Once they stopped joining, they continued to twinkle in an unnatural way. I can just explain it as turning lights on and off, and not the slightest dimness you see when looking at an actual star. Then this entire cluster moved across the sky and vanished from sight. We were all with our mouths wide open. Many of us tried to record or take pictures, but nothing showed up on the phone cameras, especially not that far away. The fact that it was 35 or so people witnessing this only about an hour after we got there means that we saw what we saw. No one was intoxicated to the point where they could have imagined it. The most interesting part is that the son of the apartment owner said that the year before he talked to a guy that said he had seen something similar on New Year's Eve the year before. He said he listened to his story but shrugged it off as some guy ranting. My family and I continue to talk about it to this day. We immediately tried to investigate about phenomenons or events that could have caused this. I'm not sure if this is the right place to share this, but I don't know where else. If anyone has had anything similar happen to them or know what this is about, I'd really appreciate being informed. Back in 2002, after a day at work waiting tables, me and my friends were out in my front yard, three friends to be exact. I was 20 years old at the time, and also I had a two-year-old black Labrador retriever. The skies were clear, the stars were visible, and it was October in central Kentucky. The grass in the yard had dew on it. So my friend and I were smoking some weed, not the strong kind, and we were chatting and talking about work and girls and stuff. My dog was fetching a football. Being very young, she was still quite wild. 
so we kicked the ball and she would run full speed to grab it while sliding several feet across the yard. We'd probably been outside 15 minutes or so, and my dog was bringing the ball back the whole time. She dropped the ball at my feet, then looked straight up into the sky, which dogs never do unless you're holding something above them. She stared for five seconds, then went back to attacking the ball. One of my friends said, what did she just look at? So we all looked around the sky and another friend said, oh my God, what is that? So we saw it, something in the sky. Against a dark black sky, we could clearly see something very large and circular. The thing is it didn't move, it had no lights. Against the clear sky though, you could see it. I'd say it was made of a dark brownish gray color. You know, it was night, so we couldn't see what it was exactly. But we could see that something was definitely there. One of my friends freaked out and consequently left. Being mesmerized by this, we started sharing stories and whatnot. And after several minutes, we noticed two more things in the sky. They were the exact same color against the sky. But the second and third were about a quarter of the size of the first. If you were to connect the dots with them, it made a perfect triangle. We stayed outside for another hour and the things in the sky never moved. And after everyone left, I came back out with my video camera, but you just couldn't see them on the video. We still talk about this night to this day. It's not the best story, but there was definitely something up there. The kicker is that the dog was the one who noticed it, a puppy who was wildly sliding around the yard chasing a ball. Unless one was looking for something in the sky, one probably wouldn't notice these things. I don't know. I just know that there were some things in the sky sitting there and against the black nighttime sky, there was a brown grayish color. And please don't say we were on drugs and that we imagined it because we all collectively saw them. I went on a walk one night with my cousin and a few of our friends. We simply went walking up and down the streets of our neighborhood to the connecting one. We didn't even branch off any external forests or wilderness or anything like that, just using well-lit streets to travel by. We walked for 30 to 40 minutes when they wanted to return to the house to play video games or watch a film. I decided to stay out when they were walking back. It was a beautiful night and I love looking at the expanse of open sky. However, the thing I saw in the sky that night would forever keep my mind open to such strange and peculiar possibilities of this multiverse in which we live. I was seated on a huge decorative boulder. The designs of the neighborhood placed five or six of these beauties on a field of grass, which separated the main street from the cul-de-sac. As I sat on this thing, I placed the crystals in my pocket onto their larger sibling and began to meditate in the cool nocturnal breeze. I watched my friends disappear around the corner in the adjacent neighborhood. And after five or 10 minutes, it came hovering by. At first, I didn't see it. I heard it. Before anything came into view, I heard the most bizarre, unsettling and yet stimulating tone. I couldn't fathom what I was hearing, nor would I ever hear anything else like it to this day. It sounded like a low, bassy hum mixed with a piercing tone in the middle of bass. It produced this noise like a binatural beat in the sense that it reverberated or pulsated, sort of like a subtle dubstep wobble. A different way to describe the piercing noise is a whistle mixed with the buzzing and zapping of an electrical current. Then as the noise got progressively louder and more disturbing, it came hovering over the tops of tall pine trees. It was small, an unknown vehicle flying so low it almost brushed the tops of the pines, and I still have never seen anything like it. It looked futuristic, and at that moment, even without putting words into my mind, I figured what I was looking at was some sort of alien craft. It didn't look like a drone or flying saucer, but like something else. It was elongated like a drone, but had no discernible properties. It seemed to just float all on its own. All the while I'm rubbing my eyes, making sense of this strange thing, but the noise just went on and on. I could tell there was a sound to its mechanisms of flight, but it seemed like it had speakers on playing additional noise. The thing I noticed about its pulsating sound is how it made me feel. As I sat and watched the combination of looking at its odd appearance and frightening sounds made me feel very out of place. 
I suddenly felt this splash of energy within me that felt like it opened my mind and body to a vast and unlimited expanse, if that makes any sense. I wasn't contemplating any additional ideas. I was just observing it and the weird psychedelic stimulation it was giving off. Eventually though, it went far enough away where the sound went faint. I didn't even think about how long I stayed there watching it, but it ended up being around 10 to 15 minutes to be far away enough where it was out of range. Was I the only one who saw it? I looked around where I was alone, but some other people must have seen it on its path far away from me. I know what some people are thinking. It was a drone and nothing more. Well, let me tell you this was not a drone. It was something way beyond our scope of conscientiousness. After that night, I tried to tell people what I'd seen, but most tried to debunk it or really didn't care. The cognitive dissonance it gave me that night has given me the knowledge that we are not alone and we haven't been for a while. There are things in this cosmos that are stranger than fiction. Just because we've never seen something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We're sitting ducks in this galaxy and anyone could be watching us beyond the scope of our singular planet. It's the summer of 2001, around July. I was living in a small town called Manville, about a 45 minutes of Vigaville, living with my half sister and her family on a corner lot with a huge yard that is hedged all around. One night during this hot summer evening, I had an electric weed whacker, which I was using to cut down the weeds in the driveway. That's when I noticed a man walking on the opposite side of the street, but he wasn't like any man I'd ever seen. His gait was very strange, almost like he was hobbling, but kind of leaning to one side. Red flags were going off and my mind told me something was amiss. I didn't ignore it. Something was very different on this evening. He was dressed in a brown trench coat with a brown fedora on his head, as well as black sunglasses. I don't know why, but he caught my attention. And all I remember is he or it was looking at me as it went by. I'm not sure. I finished the yard and proceeded to put the weed whacker away with the cord. I thought this would be a good night to camp in the backyard in an orange tent. It was roughly 10.30 to 11 at this point. The sun had pretty much gone down and I had my CD player with me for music to listen to. A little round of dance music as I laid there and started to listen and relax before I fell asleep until things around me were making noise. It sounded as if someone was walking nearby perhaps. As I lay in my tent, I remember hearing the clicking noise like on the movie Signs with Mel Gibson. I start shaking and tremble and I have to tell this story nearly crying. At the time this happened, my sister and brother-in-law at the time were all asleep. This alien, now that I think about it, was gray. I only saw the skin. You see, I was laying in my orange tent and there's a little screen window on the side at the back. Then the face all of a sudden pushed its way into the tent. I saw the head. It was large and gray and it had huge eyes. I couldn't say anything or move. I managed to squeak out a hello and there was no answer, just a clicking noise. I shut off my stereo and sat bolt upright and jumped out of the tent to confront this thing. I could have screamed in pure horror and shock. When I got out of the tent, I caught this gray creature moaning as it ran through the hedges of our house. Thank God the back door was unlocked. I ran inside and tried to wake up my sister, but she was out cold sleeping. So I hid in my nephew's room under the bed. I also felt so helpless. All I could do was watch the yard light up with a fuzzy pink light. By the time I fell asleep, I made sure the doors were locked and the windows too. Listening to this alien run around the house, the pitter patter of its feet in the grass. I don't know where it went. I don't know if it ever returned to the yard, but that night was the scariest of my life. 
I never want to meet this creature again, and it makes me wonder what would have happened if I were actually asleep. I doubt I'll ever meet it again though, thankfully. I have a friend who was really into UFOs and stargazing like me, and he went down to Minnehaha Falls in Minneapolis, which is kind of right next to an airport. We were in the dog park area, so we were there for a little bit before sunset. There were all these old ruins that date back to when it was called Fort Snellings, like old school rock outposts. We found one and sat down on it. We hadn't seen each other in a few years because I moved out of state and we were only just catching up. By this time, it's night out, there are tons of stars, and we're smoking while stargazing. As we're looking, we see this really bright star, or planet we think. We're guessing as to which star or planet it is. We stargaze a lot, so we kinda knew what's what. We watch it for about 5 minutes, it's not moving so we go back to smoking and chatting. 10 minutes later I look back, and the light is gone from the place in which it was. Then I see this super bright light coming through the tree line and it's over the Mississippi River. It was like going back and forth almost, like it was messing with us. Like we would move left to get a better look and it would move right. Then this happened. We are in a field area and there's a bunch of trees separating us from the river, with the light directly over the river, when all of a sudden, we see this super bright light come up from over the trees. One super bright light on the front of the craft, which was acting like spotlights, like it was going back and forth scanning the ground. So the spotlight in front of two dimmer lights is going back, so basically, a black triangle, probably less than 100 yards away, completely silent to about 40 to 50 feet long on either side. So it comes over the tree line, scanning the ground and we're freaking out, and I say, we're totally gonna get abducted now, dude. We're shaking, so then the spotlight lands on us and we could feel the electrical pinches and goosebumps. Once the lights hit us, they cut off, and it was just three dim lights on all three points. It slowly turned away from us and we could see, like, this exhaust coming out the back, that I can only describe as a billowing invisible rainbow. It looked like if you were to drop oil in water, you get that kind of iridescent rainbow look. It slowly flew away from us and flew over the airport, the wrong way, made like an X with the runway. We watched it slowly over the horizon, sit there for a while and then went out of eyesight. By far the craziest UFO I've ever seen. It's really strange though, because that week in Minneapolis, they were supposedly doing test flights for stealth bomber planes, but this was no stealth bomber, even those make some noise, especially that close. We looked up videos for the specific plane that they were testing and it definitely wasn't that. I honestly think they were probably man-made, probably military, right? I am now 26, but when this strange incident took place, I was only a child. I can't remember exactly how old, I had to be 8 or younger, and it happened twice, not too far apart from each other. This was at a time in my life when I knew next to nothing about aliens or UFOs. I was aware of the science fiction genre, thanks to certain movies my parents watched from time to time, but I was not aware that aliens and UFOs may actually exist, then compared to now which would make my story that much more strange, especially since we're talking about something that happened in my childhood. I remember it being nighttime initially, and naturally as a child I had a certain bedtime. That said, with bedtime you can imagine children being prone to having nightmares. I was a bit restless trying to sleep, but when I do appear to fall asleep, that's when the strange stuff happens. I was appearing to be sitting on a concrete black top. There also appeared to be baseball hoops sitting at the edge of this black top. I'm not really sure why, but even as I write this 15 years later, I can clearly remember the details. I don't know if I was influenced to do so or not, but I did so by myself when I look over to my left and I see it. It was what I can only describe in present day as some sort of craft an object, a UFO perhaps. 
Even stranger, it wasn't like it was just hovering high above the sky or anything, and it looked to be broad daylight during this scene. No, whatever it was, it was right there hovering maybe a foot or two above the black top. I would have to describe how this thing looked from my perception, but the exact dimensions of the strange UFO looking object had become hazy over the years. But it was black in colour, kind of shiny, perhaps possessing a metallic surface of some sort, and I remember that it did appear like it was a very large craft. If I referenced to the dimensions of said black top, which was actually a larger surface, the craft had a kind of unusual shape as well, and appeared both tall and wide, as opposed to having a thinner disc-like appearance, although it was also a bit longer than it was wide. It started off slightly curved at the top, before coming down, widening outwards, after creating a sort of 15 to 30 degree surface along the edge, before it met the bottom. I can't remember if it was flat at the bottom, or slightly curved, like it was at the top, but it did have a slight edge as it met at the bottom. The weird thing is this craft just seemed to hover there, making a sound that was equally unusual. The best way I can describe the sound, is it starts off with some sort of intake, like it was something to do with an engine, like the air was being taken into the craft, but what followed was a sort of strange whirring rumble. Imagine the sound of a car engine passing by your house, but muffle the loud engine sound and give it more of a high tech sound. It's like a zooming sound, only it wasn't moving. It was just hovering right there in front of me within a close enough range that I could literally touch it. And now that I think about it years later, if this had been a UFO, I almost feel like those sounds must have been from the craft's power system, even if it's an engine, and that it was the high tech electromagnetic machinery I was hearing. This experience didn't seem to end with much else happening. It was like I was there to see this strange craft and then it was over. I can't remember how long it had been since the initial experience, but it definitely wasn't the same day. And what surprised me even more, was the same or strikingly similar scene, was how I was experiencing the second incident. The same black top, the same basketball hoop sat on it. Moreover, this strange craft was black, the same appearance and the same sound. Whether it was the same sort of UFO type experience or just a dream, it's hard to say, since I didn't mention I remember trying to sleep prior. Now people tend to say it's difficult to distinguish your own dreams from something that actually happened. But this is something that makes little sense to me. Why as a child with little if any knowledge about aliens and UFOs would I suddenly experience such a thing? I could imagine it happened to older folks, but a child like myself at the time? I don't know, I'm not really sure what to think. Recently, my mum has been talking about me in my younger years, preschool to first or second grade. I don't recall, but my teachers said, according to my mum anyway, that I was an empath when it came to the feeling of other students, taking their pain as my own, I've always been able to feel the room, the house, a class, like some people's bones hurt before a storm. I've always picked up on the bad before it happens. I am by no means an anxious individual. These events did not impact my growing up. It was just kind of something on the back burner. If it feels tense, I feel it too. My parents are not very emotional people. My father being a lawyer, and mother a fitness instructor. You know those times. This has not been talked about with my parents whatsoever, in fact. I wanted to just say, it's childhood, and kids distort memories. But it is the feelings that make these memories so vivid. I want to stress that I loved where I grew up. It was far enough away and tucked into a little corner that my parents were comfortable with me being outside for hours doing as I pleased. I loved the area and the house I lived in. The house was white with pillars in the front, overlooking about an acre of land filled with trees that are sat at the very end of the cul-de-sac. I've had the best room, because it has the huge princess-esque windows that sat floor to ceiling and allowed the light from the room below the kitchen to the light up to my room, just a tad, and I could see the woods, the butterflies in the summer, and hear my parents below me. 
it was the safest area possible. Now, this may have just been childhood paranoia, but it wasn't anxiety I was feeling. It was like waiting. I never once had a sense of relief growing up anywhere, whether it be at school or at home, preschool specifically. And up until elementary school, I remember checking all the doors one last time, asking mum if the alarms had been set the night before, because of the things that I would feel in my room. I never told her why. Now, let me take you to the, your typical night. I would wake up in the middle of the night, whatever time it was, I was too young to have an alarm clock, to a feeling of dread. This happened for years. Through elementary school, the feeling happened infrequently. But just often enough for me to think, okay, here's that thing. Maybe if I don't move, nothing will happen. I'm sure everyone is familiar with the feelings of eyes being on you or being watched from afar. This is the feeling that would burn into me and would wake me. And I would feel it as I lie there awake. As I've mentioned before, I've always been able to feel the room. The feeling of dread and guilt would hang in the air. And all I could do was pretend I was somewhere else. Some nights though, I was brave. And when I looked up, beyond the curtain, my ceiling would be darker than black. My open windows that would usually illuminate my plastic stars were instead illuminating nothingness. Just imagine a funnel upside down, jet black, warping. That's what it was like to stare into. This cold and heavy black vortex over my head, over the room. I have memories pleading in the dark to come back a different night. And this is very profound. The begging and the returning. This happened for years. I remember pleading in my head to something to just take a different night. Although I don't remember anything ever past that. I don't know what you make of it. I think maybe just maybe it could have been what I experienced before I had an encounter with something unknown. Whether it be from this world or another, I cannot say. But that's what I felt like before the nothingness and passing out. I would love to know if anyone has ever had a similar experience to mine. Or is it just my five year old brain being dumb? I'd love to hear your thoughts. One day I'm driving through the city centre in the UK and stopped at lights in line of traffic. I was just looking around what was around me, looking at the buildings, cars, posters, when I noticed a really odd looking dude. I made eye contact and his face seemed wrong, like it was almost perfect. I don't mean perfect as in handsome, but it had no signs of aging or any history to it. His face had a light complexion, fairly pale, but not unusually, and as smooth as porcelain. Not a single dimple, spot, blemish, scar or flush of colour. No facial hair apart from thin eyebrows that were perfectly level and mirror images of each other. They seemed too perfect for natural eyebrows. He had prominent high cheekbones and slender cheeks with a thin nose. He was facing the side of my car from across the street. We then made eye contact. It only lasted not even 10 seconds, but his eyes were just emotionless. A dull, pale blue, like doll's eyes. After this time, he turned 90 degrees on his heels and walked away in the opposite direction I was facing. When he turned, he had very defined jawline and chin. The slopes of his nose were also flat, and their overall body shape was tall. During this whole interaction, there was no emotion on their face, no colour, or change at all. As soon as we made eye contact, it felt like it was a mistake. I had a feeling that I shouldn't have noticed him. It was unnerving. It looked to me as though I'd seen something that was only pretending to be a person like a human sized doll. I know hyper realistic masks exist, but this was no mask. It seemed hard like a shell. I don't know. Has anyone ever seen anything similar?
Hey guys, it's Mort here. Thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate that. A huge thank you as well to my amazing members and patrons. Just got a whole influx of members and patrons, which is nice. Thank you. If you would like to join and get some cool perks for doing so, you can find out how to do that in the description. Also, I'd like to say that my members and patrons are going to get a really cool benefit in the next day or so. And, um, well, I'll announce it then. But it's something that I think many of you will be excited about. So if you want to find out and get in early, just sign up to one of the two. It's very easy and relatively inexpensive and helps support the channel. Just think about it, yeah? But the hype is real. I really think many of you will enjoy it. Um, but yes, for now, I think I'm going to leave you with that little teaser. You've only got to wait a few days, really. Max. It might even be ready by tomorrow. So I'll leave that there with you. For now, I'm going to bid the all good night. Stay awesome. Close your windows. And I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>